from the RSN Carnival Studios. Each and every Saturday we bring you premium coverage of Melbourne and Sydney racing with JT. Dean Lester is bringing his fantastic information straight from the track. Mounting art analysis is just without peer and it's exclusive to Carnival. Vince Accardi's fantastic data. I'll try and chime in with a couple of winners here and there as well. We saw him okay on Saturday and we can't wait to see him even better this week as Caulfield and good class Group 1 racing returns. We're going to try and find you lots and lots of winners and good information and if you do want some of Vince's information up close and personal you can catch up with Vince and I we're having lunch at Crown March the 6th full details at my website racetrackralphie.com.au but in the meantime we're going to go to the videotape and look at race one on the program here where Jack and Obey continued winning but only just 200 to go. Jack and Obey in front. Aragonesa threatening on the outside and Mr. Milton on the rails. They're fighting it out. 50 to go. Aragonesa after Jack and Obey. Jack and Obey. Aragonesa. Bobbing go that one between Jack and Obey or Aragonesa. Not much between them. Very slow tempo race here. Now, Jack and Obey had been winning his previous two starts in fast tempo racing. So whether he's at the end of his prep after three wins in a row and a very good run in the blinkers, that's been what's transformed him, or he just needs a fast tempo racing, time will tell. Aragonese, well, that was his career best run. And a little tip here. When you see the uh, morgan Widdison combination, run one out of their class, and it was according to their handicap ratings, take great respect because they don't waste their time. They run them only with horses that are, that uh, they expect to run very well. And Aragonese just missed. Hero Master was just way out of play early. They walked, and that gave him no chance going back there. But he's lost his winning culture, Hero Master. So that's the concern there. But Jack and Obey won. I don't think we want to follow any of these horses as a rubber stamp uh, next start. But speaking of wins, uh, Tayu, he's a winner. And he took on some stayers who weren't winning a lot. And guess who won? The one who wins a lot. Tayu. Many chances. Luciola down on the inside and it leads narrowly with Tuscan Fire. Tayu joins in. Magnapel still starting to come. Tayu, Tuscan Fire, Magnapel joining in. Tayu, the leader though, with 100 metres to go. Gets away on them, draws away. Tayu comes right away in the run home. Won it by two lengths. Crafty Cruiser. Grab second, just in front of Tuscan Well, not only was Tayu super, but he was super strong late. Vince Cardi's daily sectional times had him the 27th best last 200 of the day. Put that in context, that's at the end of a 2400 race where they did, uh, well they did muck around t tempo wise, so he's just flying Tayu, he's probably going as well as he ha ever has, late in his prep, so as with a lot of Dar Darren Weir horses, don't jump off those winning trains. Crafty Cruiser, the old boy, as said by Dean Lester pre-race on the carnival coverage, ready to run his best race, and he did at 20 to 1, and old Crafty's going to pick up another staying race soon, you would think. Third race on the program, uh, this wasn't a real high-quality affair, and it was a very slow-tempo race, but Quicksilver Lass was able to win again. Running a race, got up on the inside of Kiss Me Katut. Right behind the Marina Rock, Vera Miller just got balked for a run now. She's switching over heels. Quicksilver Lass for the 100 to go. She's about three quarters. Vera Miller lunging. Quicksilver Lass hanging on. She's got in Quicksilver Lass by a neck to Vera Miller. It's one, gets home for third ahead of Kiss so Me Katut. So well done there to Quicksilver Lass, but a real moderate tempo race. Vera Miller added some traffic issues in the straight and needs a faster tempo, and it's one. They conceded early. There probably wouldn't have been a spot had they gone forward unless they went right the way forward. Hindsight's easy, but both those horses were sound. It's one was huge from too far back due to the tempo of the race. The first of two two-year-old races was race four in the program, and there was actually a bit of quality about this. Furlow getting the prize. Very strongly, prompt returns under the whip on the inside of her, and Haybar boxing on on the far side with Brooklyn. Thurlow with 150 to go, takes the lead from Brooklyn and Haybar. Thurlow, she's out on her feet, she's going to hang on though, and Thurlow got in by a neck to a half length to either Haybar or... Thurlow had probably had enough on the line, which indicates it should be able to progress again next start. Probably just short of the Group 1 standard, but should be winning lots of races there. Haybar, she's honest, she's fast, she just lacks that bit of depth late, but she's one of those speedy type two-year-olds that can win lots of prize money for connections. Can you win lots of money as a punter? Not too sure about that. Then uh, race five on the program, though. Blinkers went on a Tony McAvoy horse aimed at a feature race. It's not a bad uh, not a bad profile to look at for future, and uh, as is when the uh, that promising young kid, Damien Oliver, rides him. His name was Stoker. Stokers full of running goes to the lead. Manhattan Blues are starting to charge home, but Stokers full of running from Manhattan Blues and Jamaica, and Stokers too good for them. What a fire, length and a half Manhattan Blues. Jamaica got up for third, then... Did a good job, Stoker, and he'll be winning races, and I need to underline that both these two-year-old races re uh, line up very well here with Runway Star later in the day, older sprinters there, and that's always a good sign. So 
these two-year-old races at face value, when they when the fields first came out, you thought, oh, we're sort of looking at the B-graders here. Well, maybe, let's say, B-plus, A-minus type of horses because they did run fast times there. The ones we want a bonus, Keen Ray was very, very quick early. Now, to do that on debut was a terrific sign. Maybe if it goes to Mooney Valley next start. And the favourite there, Thurlow, again, this is on Vince Cardi's daily sectionals. Fastest last, 800, 600, 400, 200 of the day. It was just too far back and out of it early, but she's going to win lots of races and clearly will be very strong over the 1,100, 1,200 metres, which for two-year-olds is a significant jump in distance. Race six on the program here. Chile Express, last one. Melbourne Cup Day 2013, prior to winning two days ago. And Whisper Downs coming on the outside. The circles down towards the 200. Chili Express is throwing out the big challenge on the inside. Chili Express railed up and took the circles in the final hundred. Good battle for third, but Chili Express a neck in front and Chili Express a half to circles, a length and a half of ball. Well, this was a sort of low grade st stakes race. You're probably not going to be getting a lot of winners out of the first two because the circles and Chili Express, they're one of those what I call thereabouts horses. They run their usual honest races, they're in their right grade, and if uh, opportunity present themselves they win but self sense was first up good market support it's in for a ripping prep and whisper downs well i conceded early I'm uh, uh, really angry at myself rather than Michael Walker here because I should have read that on the map, but they can see it early. They walked massive mid-race squeeze. That was second up off a high-pressure first-up race. He's in for a ripping prep, Whisper Downs, and probably third up will be his go. So Whisper Downs and Self Sense are the two horses to follow from that race. Race 7 on the program here. We've been spooking, Whisper, uh, we've been spooking Profit Share. I'll get that right. We've been spooking Profit Share. Throughout, he's just been unlucky, 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 unlucky. That's four unluckies. Uh, on Saturday, he was ridden the perfect race by Michelle Payne and proved he is a talent. ...over the heels and presents quickly and Strat and Star starting to warm to the task and show us chivalry down the outside. Profit Share claims the lead. 150 metres to go from Mary and Strat and Star and chivalry. Profit Share is going strongly, though. Profit Share by two links. Strat and Star, Mary at a neck third, chivalry four. This is a strong just race. Now... Wasn't a strong tempo race, but a real, real big last 400 metre surge. Now, that's going to suit a in-form, hard-fit summer horse like Profit Share, but don't write him off as just being a summer off-season horse. He's got lots of wins in store for him, but you really want to bonus the likes of Merion, terrific first up, and conversely, Chivalry too far back, and a big surge. So I think we can uh, follow these horses with a lot of confidence. Whether they're straight to Group 1 level or not, time will tell, but I think there'll be lots of winners out of this race. Race 8 on the program here. Had a, had a bit of a mini head wobble here, because we found Runway Star at terrific odds at $12, which made up for the disappointment Pointing performance of favourite O'Malley. Antarctic Missile in front, Runway Star looks the danger, 100 to go. Antarctic Missile, Runway Star. Runway Star finishes the best and Runway Star by a length. Antarctic Missile, single days, ran on really Runway well. Runway Star, third. first up and for Peter Moody, formerly with Jill Ryan, had run some really good races in Sydney when she was right. She was real top five type performer on the day and that's what she brought to uh, Sandown. But a monster close, best 600 of the day. Just stick with her. She'll be winning races again for sure. Runway Star, over Antarctic Missile, and another horse who won first up at Flemington and, and definitely elevated on Saturday there. And O'Malley, maybe back to the drawing board, maybe 1,200 off a soft tempo race after a dynamic first up win for O'Malley. Last race on the program, Imports, ran the Quinella here. Swift Shadow and Himalaya Dream, one from Hong Kong, one from France. Spirit of Endeavour and Swift Shadow are there. Uh, King of uh, getting up on the inside now. Cross of Gold is starting to finish the race off well. It's still Himalaya Dream and uh, on the outside Swift Shadow. They've come clear now. Himalaya Dream and Swift Shadow with about 150 to go. They've been hammering at one another all the way. Himalaya Dream kicking. Swift Shadow dive. They hit the line. Bob and go. Bob and go there between Swift Shadow Himalaya Dream. Nothing between them. It's and amazing when a stable's up. going well, they get the bobs of the heads in too, and Swift Shadow getting the money there for the hayes in combination just from Himalaya Prince. Don't think you can run any, much better than that after 18 months off, regardless of the class or what standard you're at, so he should elevate out of that. Live for today, the fourth horse, begging for a wet track. He's in the zone. Darren Weir horses in the zone, of course, can be continued to be followed with confidence. Horses to follow out of this race for next start out of this race meeting, Runway Star. No reason, reason to drop off Runway Star. It was a terrific first up win. Plenty more wins in store for it from the so-called feature race on the program there both self sense and whisper downs they're in for fantastic preparations there and can win lots of races there and the one i really want to follow is jamaica when uh, when it gets over further 1100 1200 range of two-year-old there should be winning next start all my stuff is at racetrackralphie.com.au and all the premium coverage of melbourne and sydney will be right here on carnival next saturday